Welcome to Charleston Parents Connect. I am Danica Todd, certified doula, licensed massage therapist, and certified yoga and Pilates instructor. It is my intention through sharing content and creating community to transform your relationships, inspire connection, and lead communities to live unapologetically. I am kicking off your weekly Tough Love Tuesday segment with something we can all benefit from, and that is two big words, informed consent. Informed consent is a noun, and it means consent by a person to undergo a medical procedure, participate in a clinical trial, or be counseled by a professional such as a social worker or lawyer after receiving all material information regarding risks, benefits, and alternatives. I'm going to say that again. After receiving all material information regarding risks, benefits, and alternatives. As a certified doula, I am trained to teach couples how to dialogue with their primary care provider and birth locations so they can get the information they need to make smart decisions for their family. Being a certified doula also has given me the benefit of being a responsible advocate for my own family, but I wasn't always like this. When my son Macy was 16 months old, he was admitted to MUSC for seizures. I was a fresh new doula with only three births under my belt. I certainly didn't have the confidence or maturity to apply my doula skills to the pediatric ward. I was scared. We were in the middle of an ice storm. Staff couldn't leave the hospital because their replacements couldn't even get there. There wasn't even a pediatric neurologist in the building and they were ordering tests and talking about medications that would need to be taken for three years. Looking back, I don't even know what I signed, when I signed it, or what it even said on the paperwork. I was definitely overwhelmed. Everything was happening so quickly, but at the same time, time was standing still. With a moment of clarity, I picked up the phone and I called my friend Sonia. Now keep in mind, it was like 12.30, maybe 1 a.m. I was tired, confused. I didn't even realize what time it was. She stayed on the phone with me and coached me through my fears and my options. I was fortunate that not only was Sonia a doula, she was also a pediatric RN. She actually worked at that hospital. I was scared of the side effects of the medicine. And I was scared he would seize again. She explained to me that it takes time for the medication to start working. If I decided to wait and speak to the pediatric neurologist in the morning and Macy seized again, he would have seized whether he took that medicine or not. This was the turning point for me. I got out of my fearful brain and kicked into my advocate brain. We waited for the testing and we waited for the doctors to do rounds in the morning. When they came in with the results of the test, I was prepared by then to ask the right questions to make a fully informed decision on what treatment plan was best for our son. By knowing how and what questions to ask, we learned that the daily preventable medication that they were recommending wasn't even guaranteed to work and that we would need Valium on hand for if he seizes for 10 minutes or longer. We also learned that using those daily meds when compared to only using the Valium when he seized for 10 minutes or longer came out equally effective in test studies. With that information, 
we decided to just use the volume when needed and not risk the side effects of the daily medication. After having 15 seizures in 12 months, my son has since outgrown his seizure disorder and ended up only needing to use that Valium three times out of 15 seizures. If we had gone the route of taking a daily pill, he would still be on them for another eight months from today. It would have been two years on a daily prescription that he didn't actually even need. So my question is, have you ever felt like you were stuck in a treatment plan that you didn't need anymore? I know I have. I know my son would have if we had gone the route of taking that daily medication. So why don't we speak up for ourselves? What makes us think that being a good patient means being a silent patient, not wanting to cause any ruffles or hurt their feelings. So why should you care about informed consent? You may realize the original plan is the best one for you. You might decide that taking a daily pill is okay for your family or you may discover options that better meet your family values. Your family can depend on you to advocate for their care, and you will know the full benefits and the full risks of any treatment plan before making a decision for you or your family's health. Now, I can hear you. You're telling me, but Danica, I don't know how to talk to the medical staff to get these kinds of answers. So here are five questions that you can ask when you go to the doctor's office, the dentist, the hospital, or anywhere else you are signing an informed consent form as part of your care. One, would you recommend your own family member to do this? Now legally, they can't answer that question, but you can look at their body language when you ask them. Two, can we wait to make this decision? Three, what happens if we don't do it? And four, what alternatives are available? And Lastly, if it's a medication, ask to see the information provided by the drug company. This is what started my conversation with the hospital staff, and it resulted in finding another treatment plan that we were more comfortable with trying first. Sometimes it takes a doctor by surprise to have a patient or a patient's family member ask questions about why they are recommending a treatment plan or for full information on a medication. So for your bonus panel, I have three statements you can use during your conversation that can help your doctor see that you are not trying to disrespect them or question them or their professional opinion. Number one. We are here because we trust and value your expertise. And we would like to take a minute to better understand your recommended treatment plan. Make sure when you use the statement, you say and, not but. But negates that you value their trust and expertise. You don't want to say we are here because we trust you, but we want to take a minute. Make sure you say we are here because we trust and value your expertise and we would like to take a minute to better understand your recommended treatment plan. Number two, I would like to give informed refusal. This means that you are not going to approve the plan, either temporarily or permanently. 
three, I would like to get an independent second opinion. So now that I've given you this information, let me give you an example of how this might look in a conversation. Hi, Dr. Smith. We are here because we trust and value your expertise, and we would like to take a minute to better understand your recommended treatment plan. What are the risks and benefits to this treatment plan? Insert their answer. Well, what alternatives are available? Maybe they say a few. What happens if we don't do this? Here's their medical opinion. I would like to give informed refusal until I can get an independent second opinion. We will let your office know when we have made a decision. Thank you for your time. So I hope you found some value today in our first Tough Love Tuesday video. So with that, we have completed our video in this series. And I would like to ask you to subscribe now to stay up to date with all the empowering information coming your way. And don't forget to join the Facebook group at Charleston Parents Connect and start meeting with awesome parents just like you.